What's the deal with y'all, man? Oh, hold on. Your boy got a haircut. Hey, you better not let your girl see this video because you're going to be in some trouble. Nah, but um, y'all can already see by the title, man. We finna do a Q&A. It's your boy, that's Dylan. We back with another video, man. So let's get into it. So the first question we're going to start with is what are the pros and cons of being a mixer driver? Now, I say the pros is, um, you know, you get to go out and about and see new things every day. You know, you're going on different job sites, you know, seeing different people work, different jobs, you know, all for the same cause. You know, whether if you're a person that likes to talk to people or you're a person that likes to stay to yourself, you know, the job is good for each individual. You know, like I said, you go to different job sites, you get to talk to people, you know, see how they go about their day differently, see the different kind of jobs that are taking place. You know, you, it's kind of like networking. You can go to different jobs and network and, you know, maybe you get influenced to do something else in the future. So that's what I like about, you know, doing this job, too. You see different neighborhoods. You know, you go do different shopping centers. You get to get good food, you know, pass by good food places. You can stop and go get something to eat. And like, and let me, and like I said, you know, for those of you that want to stay to yourself, you know, you go to the job site say what's up or whatever to the customer, see how they want the load, and then you dump the concrete and you leave and you're on your way. And that's all that is to the job. It's really easy. You know, you go to the, you get to the plant, get loaded, you set the load and, you know, you drive and get to the job site and dump the concrete and, you know, you get on your way. So it's a really easy job. They train you to do everything. Anybody can do this job. You just got to make sure you're being safe while you're doing the job, you know. I drive, I can listen to my music, you know, eat, you know, stop, get some snacks, you know, whatever. It's pretty, it's a, it's a chill job. You know, I recommend this job. If you want to get your foot in the door, I recommend this job to anybody, you know. Driving mixer trucks, you know, will get your feet wet in the truck industry, like as far as driving trucks, because the truck swerves and sways, you know, you, you got you, you got to know your tag axle pressure, you know. It's a lot of different things that you can learn from this job and take with you elsewhere, so... I recommend the job to anybody. Now, as for the cons, there's not too much I can complain about this job. You know, to be honest, it's a really good job. I really don't got no that many complaints. But if I had to, I'd probably say is the scheduling. Like with this job, you don't have no set schedule. For example, I get my start time at 6 p.m. every day. So at 6 p.m., they'd be like, okay, you got to come in at 4 a.m. So I'll come in at 4 a.m., and I won't know what time I'm getting off, depending on the workload. So if there's a lot of work, if the workload, if it's, if it's a lot of workload, then, you know, I could be there from 8 hours to all the way from 16, you know, depending on, like I said, depending on the workload. If there's not a lot of workload, then you could do maybe 4 hours, 6 hours, you know. It, it's whenever the work gets done, you know, to be honest, so... Like I said, it's the scheduling. You never know when you're getting off, so it's kind of hard to plan your day. And, um, like, for example, you could work with this job, you could work up to 16 hours, and you, you only can have you're legally allowed a 10 hour break period. So you could work, you could work how many hours you can, but as long as you got that 10 hours, that 10 hours off, you could come back in. So, for example, I'll come in at like 4 a.m. and I'm just giving you an example. I'll come in at 4 a.m. and work until uh, 10 a.m. about five hours, and then the I'll, I'll get off early, like at 10 o'clock, and they'll send me a message to my phone. Oh, you know, you got a you got a start time tonight at 10:30. Now I'm I'm allowed to do this because I got that 10 hour break period. I can basically come back in the same day, so. You could, so doing this type of job, you're going to work some hours, anywhere from 12 to 16. So when you get into this industry, either construction or just concrete in general, just be ready to work and I say, say goodbye to your outside life, you know. Just know what you're doing it for when you get into this. Next question is, how old were you when you got your CDL and was it hard to get? When I got my CDL, I think I, I just had turned 19 and, um, was it wasn't hard to get at all. I just, you know, I, I study. I use these apps to study. I use the DMV uh, test study guide, and I went to the DMV, and I took all the tests needed to get my permit and endorsements, and I went there, and I knocked it all out in the same day. Then after that, I, um, I searched for trucking schools in my area, and I went to trucking school, but 
a little backstory. So before that, I had some type of experience, you know, driving as far as pulling a trailer or combination of whatever you, how you want to say it. When I would go to the lake with my family, I'd be the one that's always pulling the boats and backing up and, you know, just maneuvering the trailer around. So I had some type of experience. And then before, before I started driving trucks, I was working at a warehouse. I was driving forklifts and, um, they had a yard goat. I don't know if some of you guys know what that is. It's like a small little truck. And um, I basically, I was shutting, I was shuttling 53 foot trailers, you know, parking them in the warehouse, bringing them in the warehouse, stuff like that. And, um, you know, before they let me do it, I would tell them, I'm like, yeah, I know how to back trailers up. I, you know, I know how to maneuver. I know how to back. And they, and then for a couple months, they wouldn't let me do it because they didn't think I could. And uh, then I started, you know, I started really pressing them about, you know, let me do it. I know how to do this. And so they gave me the chance to do it, and I. Then the first time I did, you know, I was good. You know, I knew I was good, but they didn't think I was good, so I had to show them. And you know, ever since then, they wouldn't get me out the truck. You know, I was shuttling these trailers all day, but I wasn't complaining because at the end of the day, that was just getting. I was just getting more experience under my belt, and it did help me in the long run. So I can't complain on that. But yeah. I was working at the warehouse, you know, and then I was saving money. I was putting all my money into trucking school so I could hurry up and pay off the school and get my CDL as quickly as I can. So, yeah, it wasn't hard. You know, it just depends on you how fast you pick things up and, you know, how hard you want it and your determination. But, yeah, you guys could get your CDL too, so make sure y'all go get that. Um, I just dropped the um, course in the description for y'all. It got everything you need to know to get your CDL and the steps that's walk you through it and, you know, from the pre-trip to the trucking parts to the scripts that you need to know. So make sure y'all go get that in the description. So the next question is, are you still driving and why haven't you posted any more driving videos? Yes, I'm still driving. I'm still driving. I'm still doing the mixer truck stuff. So why haven't I posted any more videos? Um, long story short, basically, um, as far as you guys know, the videos that I have posted of me driving, you know, the mixer trucks, you know, it was getting a lot of attraction, you know, people were seeing it, you know, it got a good amount of views on it. So long story short, <clears throat> basically people that, you know, work at the company, they started to see my videos and, you know, as far as I know, I was doing everything, you know, as safely as I could, but I guess they deem, you know, me filming as a distraction. Uh, I guess while driving so long story short they didn't want me to film anymore and you know that's on that but I like I could have went to go get another job and started filming but you know I don't know their policies and they may not like me filming and at the time you know I just had got my CDL so I needed to you know continue to work this job to get my feet wet you know to stack my money up so I just decided to put um, YouTube to the side for a little bit but um i do plan on uploading more content you know i do many of other things outside of trucking you know i work on cars you know i like to have fun ride dirt bikes jet skis you know anything to do with a motor i'm there so yeah make sure y'all stay tuned i like i said i will be dropping more content but yeah that's a, that's why i stopped you know posting more trucking videos and you know i did like filming the videos for you guys you know it was fun for me so and I really thought, you know, the, you know, that type of industry, a lot of people don't know about and like how interesting that job can be. But yeah, I also recommend like that, it's a good job for anybody that wanted to get. But yeah, that's why I stopped um, filming trucking videos. What is the pay range and benefits at your job? Um, so when I started at this job, keep in mind, I'm in I'm in Southern California, so. When I started at this job, I think I started around like twenty four fifty. When I was in training, you you get paid training, so I think it was like twenty four fifty paid training, and then I think I went up to like twenty six something, and then you know months later, I think I went up to like twenty seven some, and then at nighttime, you get paid um, you get paid a dollar more. I'm pretty sure, and then like if you're on if you if you go to a government job, you get prevailing wage. Um, I think cap is maybe 30. I'm not sure on that, but, um, yeah, I know you guys probably want an average of what I make every week. I get paid every week. Um, like I said, with this job, your hours like will differ every week. Sometimes you may get 20 hours. Sometimes you may get 40. Sometimes you may get 50. Sometimes you may even get 60. So, you know, every week is different. 
but you know for the most part when it's busy you making money and when it's not busy you um you know you're not making that much money this is what they don't tell you you know it, and you we got a rainy season we got a summer we got a winter we got a fall so when it rains you can't pour concrete in the rain and so nobody's going to build so if nobody's building you're not working so if you're not working you're not making no money so yeah like i said when it's busy you making money when it's slow you're not so make sure y'all be aware of that if you're getting into this industry but yeah i say on a, like a 40 hour work week maybe i'm gonna say for regular 40 hours no overtime maybe i probably average maybe 1100 before taxes yeah keep in mind before taxes so you know i ain't, i'm single i ain't got no dependents so you know they they killing me on taxes right now and plus you go outside and it, we paying seven dollars for freaking seven dollars a gallon in California. Like, come on now, your money not money in no more. So it's like that eleven hundred ain't eleven hundred in no more. You get what I'm saying, you know? So it's like, come on now, you can't win for losing. But nah, man. So like I said, I'm young. I ain't got that many bills, and you know, I don't just you know be splurging my money. So I'm okay. I'm doing good. So yeah. And as far as benefits, you know, the benefits are good. You get medical, dental, eyes, all that good stuff, you know. So, you know, you can't complain. It's a good, so if, like I said, you can't complain. It's a good job. So that's that. What would you be doing if you weren't truck driving? Uh, what would I be doing if I wasn't truck driving? Before I was truck driving, you know, I was, I was a full-time boxer. I was going, I was working a part-time job. And I was boxing. I was seriously boxing. I was an amateur boxer. I mean, I'm going to the gym every day. The homies asking me to hang out. I'm like, nah, I gotta go to the gym. So yeah, man, that was that was my that was my stuff. Bo yeah, boxing. And then if I wasn't truck driving, I'd probably be doing that. Or I'll probably you know started a YouTube channel. You know, like I said, I'm into cars, so I probably would have started a rapping business, auto detailing. I actually already do got an auto detailing business, but yeah. Something along them lines, you know, being an entrepreneur, I really do not like working, you know, I'm not going to say that, but, you know, my goal is to be an entrepreneur in the future, but, yeah, if I wasn't truck driving, I'd probably be boxing or owning some type of business. What camera do you use to record with? Right now, I'm on my iPhone, to believe it or not, I really am. I got, you could, the iPhone is a good camera, it just depends on how you set up the settings. Right now, I got my settings on 4K at uh 24 frames per second so if you filming i recommend filming in 4k i mean how better can it get than that and um when i'm doing my pov videos in the truck i usually i use a gopro hero 11 i strap it to my helmet and film that way you know i put this uh the settings on that is like a same thing on my iphone 4k 60 frames per second it all depends on like what type of filming you're trying to do so yeah man get you an iphone you don't need no expensive camera to start you really don't. I'm on my iPhone and we thugging it and it's working. So we good on that. Do you plan on making a career out of trucking? Now, I ain't gonna lie. If you start out getting into trucking is a good career move. You know, if you're trying to change your life or, you know, get some money or dig yourself out of, out of a hole, trucking is a good career to get into it. I do not knock it at all. You know, I say if you do, if you are planning to get into trucking, Know how to manage your money, man, because when you when you truck driving, you're going to get your money fast. No matter if you a, um, if you're a company driver or if you're an operator or if, you, or if you're an owner operator, you're going to get your money fast. So, you know, choose wisely on what you're doing with your money because you don't want to be working, you know, you know, losing all your time and out on the road for all these, you know, hours and days. And you look up and you don't have nothing to show for. So. If you get into trucking, I kid you not, learn money manage management. That's going to be your best friend. Um, but do I plan on making a, a career out of it as a driver standpoint? Since I'm young, yes, I'll make, you know, I'll be a driver, but you know, for the long run, I do not plan on making a career out of it, you know, being a long-time driver. I just don't see myself doing that because you know, truck driving, it, it take away a lot of your freedom. You know, you're always out on the road, whether you're an owner operator or a company driver, you know, you work a lot of hours. For example, I've been doing this job for like uh, about a year now. And, and you know, 
I'm, I've been hanging out little, little, like, I kid you not, little. i just been working this whole year, but, you know, it's paying off because at the end of the day, I'm getting a return on my investment. So, you just, it, just, it depends on what you're doing it for, you know. But in the long run, I see myself in the trucking industry. I probably, if I had to, I'd own my own, you know, trucking company. But I'm just trying to get my feet wet, you know, trying to see what I like. What's the best lane to go in? Because you got all types of trucking, whether that's, you know, bottom dumps, tanker, reefer, flatbed, heavy haul, dump trucks. You know, the lane is endless. So I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what I want to do and how I want to go about it. So, yeah. All right, next question. What made you want to do YouTube? What made me want to do YouTube, to be honest, is just watching everybody else doing it, you know? I see people getting on YouTube. They just filming, you know, their lives or filming what they do. And they edit and post it, and they making thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars. Like that, literally, I'm watching this. is really like a no-brainer. If you think about it, like it's like a gold mine. If you like, if you really know what you're doing and know how to monetize, you know, your life. So I just would get on YouTube, and I'll see everybody, you know, filming their niche, you know, what they do on their day-to-day -day life. And I'm like, man, I could do this too, you know. Like, what makes me different than these other people? And I'm like, nobody. So, you know, I bought a GoPro, strapped it to my helmet. I was I got my CDL and I was, you know, starting a new job. So I'm like, man, maybe I need to film this because I don't see nobody else doing it. And if they are doing it, you know, it wasn't at the level that I'm doing it at. So, yeah, I just took that in mind and I just I just ran with it. I just like I said, I bought my camera, filmed, edited it, and then posted and it just went from there. So anybody can do it. You can do it. You know, you don't need the most expensive equipment to start, man. Like I said, it just depends about it depends on your determination and how hard you want it. And yeah, your lifestyle, you know. So, yeah, that's what made me want to do YouTube. What or who influenced you to start driving trucks? Oh, man. I say about two years ago, I, I really didn't plan on getting my CDO at all. Like, I was just focused on boxing. Like, it was just boxing or nothing. That was it. But, um, yeah, I met um, my big homie Johnny. He had a box truck, and he was going on the load. And I was like, um, let me roll with you. He was like, all right, come on. So I rode with him on a, uh, we was doing Amazon Relay, you know, picking up loads for clients, you know, stuff like that. And um, he was like, you want to drive? And I'm like, for real? You just going to let me drive? Like, I, like, keep in mind, I have no type of experience driving trucks. You know, I thought he was playing at the time. He was like, yeah. he was like, hop in and drive. I'm like, for real? He's like, yeah. So, I mean, I drove the truck. And, you know, the rest is history. You know, when I was driving, I'm like, man, I can, like, you know, I can do this. You know, maybe this may be a, a right move for me to get my CDL. So, I went with him on a weed. He was doing Amazon Relay and, um... We was picking up loads for clients, and I'm going to keep it real with y'all. That Amazon Relay, you know, it has its ups and downs, but, like, the trucking industry is not, like, it's whatever right now. Like, we would get loads for, like, a, uh, I don't know. It, de it depends on, like, how far you're trying to go and what you're trying to do it for. I say, like, a dollar fifty to $2 is maybe the lowest that we will go. But even at that, like, all the good loads will pop up on the load board, and, like, in 30 seconds, they're they're gone. So you really got to be on that load board watching for the good loads. And then if you do get a good a good load, you know, it's going this far. And then you got to get another load coming back. And then sometimes you may get another load coming back. And then sometimes you may not. So it's like you want that load coming back so you can cover the fuel costs. And fuel is, what, diesel fuel is like 6 $7 right now. So it's like you really got to make all ends meet. You know, if you're not making all ends meet, it, it, it wouldn't make sense to run the truck. So, yeah, long story short, we, we parked the truck because, it, you know, it just wasn't making sense. It, it's cheaper to park the truck than to run the truck for, you know, little money. And, and a lot of people out here, they got to stop accepting these cheap loads, you know, just to stay in business. You know, if everybody will stop, you know, accepting these cheap loads, then maybe, you know, we'll get loads, you know, for the right price, you know. And the brokers want to cheat you. You know, everybody want to cheat you. They want the driver to drive for nothing and, you know. That ain't, that's a no-go. But yeah, <clears throat> so I did the, I was doing the box trucking. I was doing box truck. And um, then after that, um, I linked up with this one dude. He had a hot shot company. He had uh, two enclosed car trailers. I think it was like maybe like 40 feet, something like that. And um, he had like two dualies. Like, buddy had clients. Like, 
I mean, we was picking up uh, exotic cars going up San Francisco, down to San Diego. It was like, I'm talking about $1,000 a day. And uh, like I said, this is why when you get into trucking, you need to have your money right because there could be opportunities that pop up and like unexpectedly, for example, I was running with him, he, you know, he was, um, I was learning everything that he knew and he, um, he offered, you know, for me to purchase, he offered to sell his business to me and his business was like 250K. And it's like, damn, like, I just thought to myself, like, man, if I, if I had this money, I would have go ahead and be able to, you know, pull the trigger on his business and, you know, have something of my own. But only thing is, dude, he didn't want to give me, you know, his clientele that he already had with the business. So it's like, I'll get, you know, everything that I need to start, but, you know, I have to build, you know, my clientele from scratch, which it wouldn't have been a bad look, but from a business standpoint, you know, I'm going to need all that for, you know, that price. But yeah, like I said, this is why I decided to get into trucking so I can, you know, I can stack my money up and, you know, have money, you know, have money capital saved up. So if an opportunity is presented to me or I create opportunities for, for myself, I made a I'm able to pull the trigger for myself and, you know, go ahead and do that. But, yeah. So, yeah, I did hot shotting, you know, did that for a little bit. <clears throat> and, you know, after a while, you know, that stopped, that didn't play out good. So then after that, you know, I just went on my own. I found me, a, you know, a local job that was paying good. And, you know, the rest is history. So, yeah, you know, we still on the grind, you know. We still out here, man. That's all that matters. You know, the grind don't stop. It's a marathon, not a race. You feel me? So we just going to keep grinding. Next question is, where do you see yourself in five years? Uh, in five years, I see myself, you know, either owning some type of business or, you know, <clears throat> right now my main goal is, right now I'm exchanging my time for money and my main goal is to have my money give me more time back, you know. Because I'm not trying to, you know, slave my years of work to a job, you know. I'm trying to live my life, you know, experience life, you know, do try new different things and hang out with family and friends. Because, you know, at the end of the day, we only get one life, and, you know, that's what it's about, you know, experience. So, in five years, I either want to own my own business, you know. I'm not sure on what type of aspect I want to pursue, you know. I'm still trying to get my feet wet, you know. I'm only, I just turned 20 years old. So, you know, I'm still learning, man. And that's all we can do, you know. But yeah, like I said, if I, like I probably want to own my own business, you know. Like I'm doing YouTube, so if I'm able to do YouTube full time, then that'll be great. So yeah, I'm just keeping my options open, you know. I really can't say like, oh, I'm gonna do exactly this because you never know. Anything could change. Anything could happen, you know. I'm just keeping, you know, my spirits high and just keep grinding to the better cause, and you know, staying true to myself. So yeah. And um, last question is um. Let me see. What equipment do you need to perform your driving job? Now, specifically my job, um, you need a hard hat. You need a hard hat. You need gloves. You need steel toe and waterproof boots. You know, I'll get me one of them headlights that go around your head so you can see at dark because you do, you do work at nighttime. Um, like I said, gloves, hard hat, boots. Um, you need a, um, a reflective vest. A jacket because in the winter time it do get cold out there and you're gonna be outside but yeah other than that the job pretty much provides you for everything that you need as far as the company that I work for just check with your company that you work at but yeah <clears throat> as far as you know the, the for those of you that do no touch spray I'm not sure what you guys will need I'm just speaking from my standpoint but yeah other than that man I hope you guys enjoyed the Q&A you know that's gonna be it for this video man I hope you guys, you know, subscribe, man. Keep on liking the videos. I appreciate y'all for showing me love. And like I said, I'm going to keep on posting content. It may not be trucking content, but, you know, I do plan on filming other videos and posting. So, and I know you guys, you know, follow me for to see specifically the trucking content. And if you want to unsubscribe, you know, I appreciate y'all for being here while y'all was here. And if you want to continue to watch me and, you know, show love and continue to ride with me on this journey i appreciate that too so you already know what it is it's your boy that's dylan gd man we getting every dollar man so appreciate y'all for tuning in go